Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 107. Floor 107 will have you squaring off against Pavel, who has several very annoying mechanics. First up is his ultimate destructive pursuit. It always targets the highest health hero, and he starts the battle with it, and every time he has his ultimate gauge full. It gets stronger if he has one or more buffs on him, so you're going to want to have some way to mitigate the amount of buffs that the character actually has throughout the fight. If it has at least one buff on him, then this move has a two-turn stun attached to it. If Pablo has two or more buffs on him when he uses it, then it also throws back the target that he hits. It throws back their cooldowns by two turns. And again, this move, I want to stress, does a lot of damage. And you might be thinking, oh, it'll hit my tank. They'll be the highest health hero. I'll just heal up with Tamarin or whatever have you. Wrong. We have Pavel's passive skill crisis response, and I think this is why people consider this one of the harder abyss floors in the entire game. When an enemy uses a non-attack skill, dispels all debuffs from Pavel, and gives him an evasion buff for one turn, which that's a buff for destructive pursuit, so you're basically helping him out. And then he increases the combat radius of all other allies on his team by 30%. Spoiler alert, those other adds that are on the floor Give buffs to Pavel, so you're just, again, helping him with Destructive Pursuit. Additionally, it decreases the amount recovered from that non-attack skill by 80%. So traditional healing skills from Soul Weavers like Tamarin and Angelic Montmorency, Angelica, things like that, they are very bad here because they make Pavel and his allies significantly stronger and you get almost nothing in return for it. The big trick to this fight to passing it easy is playing a healer that is a non-traditional healer and we'll talk about some of those here in the video additionally if you use aoe attacks right his raider survival techniques greatly reduces the damage that they receive and makes destructive pursuit come off cooldown one turn earlier additionally raider survival technique says that max hp percentage damage is not as effective here so things like Daydream Joker and Commander Lorena aren't as effective as they would be on other floors. That said, they're still better than like 99% of the things you can play. So we're still going to play them. Pavel is accompanied by Summer and Gara, And he's a really, really obnoxious ad. His ultimate gives buffs to Pavel. Bad because it buffs his ultimate. Summer and Gara's basic attack skill steals buffs from our team and gives them to Pavel. Again, that's bad because of Destructive Pursuit. And then also every time he goes for a basic attack, it triggers a guaranteed dual attack with Pavel with Storm Bullet, which is an AoE attack here, right? And it increases your entire team's skill cooldowns, right? It's really, really annoying, right? It decreases a random enemy. I should say it's your whole team. It is an AoE attack against the whole team, but randomly having your skill cooldowns messed up in addition to big AoE damage when you can already not heal from Crisis Response is obnoxious. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, just kill the dog first. Don't have to deal with it. If you kill him, he revives with right, as Righteous Thief Ruzid with 100% combat readiness and immediately buffs Pavel. So that's, yeah, you just, you can't kill the dog. Even if you decide to ignore the dog, you still have to fight Ruzid once Pavel gets under 50% health. Case in point, long story short here, you need some kind of character to sleep or stun the dog. You have to be able to CC the dog. If you don't, it's just going to make everything so much more difficult. Now, that's just the second floor. The first floor sucks. The boss here, Temple Guardian, absolutely sucks. At the start of the battle, and every time he has his ultimate, he is going to use this move here. Advance, grants all allies critical hit chance for two turns, dispels all debuffs from all of his allies, and grants a barrier to himself for two turns that cannot be dispelled. Now, if you read Front Shield here, greatly decreases damage suffered when an ally except for the caster is attacked. This effect decreases as the caster's current health decreases. So if the Temple Guardian is at full health, which he starts with that huge barrier, right? You can't do more than one point of damage to any of the adds that he spawns with. So you have to get through the, the shield. Problem is, greatly decreases damage suffered if the caster is covered by a barrier when attacked by a basic attack. You can't deal any damage you do zero damage to barriers with basic attack skills so things like Lorena's s1 or like Rod Solburn 
that does no damage to barriers. So the only way to deal damage to barriers is with strong single target moves that are on a character's skill three. Otherwise, you just have to wait for the barrier to come off and then you only get one turn cycle to try to burst this dude down before you go back to the start and he puts the barrier all up over again. No big deal. You're thinking maybe, hey, the, the first floor just takes forever. Well, the ads that are here with the Temple Guardian are these gunfire cannons. And they do insane damage. They strip buffs off your team, they silence you, and they do not so damage. In fact, if all three cannons use their ult back to back to back, I promise you at least one person on your team is probably dead. Like, it's a ton of damage. So not only do you need CC for the Angara, you need CC for these cannons. You need to keep, keep them slept or you need to stun them, right? Or you need to keep them slow because if these things get turns in a row where they go one ults, second ults, third ults, that's game over. It's super, super annoying. You basically have to stall for time, wait and pick your windows for when you can burst down this temple garden. But hey, as a bonus, if you take too long on the first floor, you get this good luck passive that gives life steal to everybody when you start fighting Pobble. That could help with your healing problems if you were using a character like Montmorency or Angelica or Tamarin, right? If like those are your only real healing options, then you're going to need to try to stall long enough through all of the cannon BS in order to get this healing touch passive. All right, now that we know the mechanics, let's talk about who we're playing. First up, our tank, the man, the myth, the legend, Adventurer Raz. The best Abyss tank in the game. Arius as our artifact. Health percentage necklace. Health percentage ring. Speed as the main stat on the boots. Over 60% effectiveness. So that, that way we can abuse command strike for big damage when the opportunity presents itself. Now for our healer. Inos 2.0 in my opinion is the best character in the game for this floor. She doesn't natively have healing on her basic attack skill, so you will need the 5-star artifact Celestine in order to sustain your way through it. For the necklace, it is going to be health percentage, health percentage here on the ring, and boots are speed. At least 60% effectiveness, so that, that way her silent fire has max chance to defense break the target, right? That is something that you're going to need. And then obviously if you can get her skill tree and whatnot leveled, that's going to be great. Again, this is in my opinion the best soul weaver, the best healer you can play. She is a ML character, yes, but a three-star that hopefully you have pulled up until this point. She is still a fairly common character. Most people have access to her. The only sticking point for Inos would be if you don't have Celestine. If you do not have the artifact Celestine, then yeah, obviously this character is not going to work for you. In that case, I recommend taking a ranger such as Bomb Model Kana or whatever big damage ranger that you have and playing them on the artifact Bloodstone. This is another way for you to produce a healer that does not use non-attack skills. Some kind of Bloodstone Ranger will work. Again, Bloodstone, though, is a five-star artifact. If you have neither Bloodstone nor Celestine, then your only choice at that point would be to play a character like Tamarin and suffer through the floor's mechanics. It's possible. It's just way, way, way more difficult. I decided to go with Inos for this video to really, again, hammer home the importance of having the correct unit in Epic 7. This is a unit that everybody has. It's literally just a matter of, do you have Celestine? If you have Celestine, you have Inos. This is the character you should be playing. Don't beat your head uh, against the table going, why can't I win with Tamarin when there is such an easy solution right in front of you? Just build the Inos. As for our DPS, you already know. It's the girl, Commander Lorena. Daydream Joker, even though Pavel's passive reduces it, we're still playing it. Even though Commander Pavel, or I should not say Commander Pavel, but Commander Lorena's damage is reduced by Pavel. Sorry there. Uh, we're still playing Lorena, no matter what, right? Believe anybody? Uh, anyways, yeah. Critical hit damage here on the necklace, attack percentage on the ring, and boots here are going to be attack percentage just to get as much damage as we possibly can on each of Lorena's interactions, get big damage, and abuse the skill two on Roz, right? Get as high of damage as possible on your critical hit damage and your attack percentage. And then finally, our very quickly becoming MVP of this series, Dollmaker Pearl Horizon is our last character. So 
This is going to be the person that is in charge of slowing and sleeping the cannons on the first floor, as well as sleeping and stunning the Angara and Ruzid on the second floor. I think personally, the best character for the job, if you have her, is Tenebria, but this is a specific five star. I'm trying very hard to use as few five stars as I can in this series. And Pearl Horizon over these last like week or two, uh, last weeks, has kind of proven to be a significantly more competent character than I ever gave her credit. She is very, very strong here. Artifact, Abyssal Crown, or Iela Violin. Your preference, Iela, is a free-to-play option. This is a way for you to strip buffs with Pearl Horizon off of Pavel, reduce the damage that your characters take from his ultimate skill. Abyssal Crown is, in my opinion, a bit better, but that is a 5-star. I am trying to only use mandatory 5-stars like Bloodstone or Celestine, right? Where it's like the strategy just simply does not work without them. So that's why I went with Iela Violin, but Abyssal Crown... Works absolutely fine here. Boots are speed. The necklace and the ring do not matter what the stats are. As long as Dollmaker is fast with over 60% effectiveness and doesn't die in one hit, anything else on it is just gravy. That's why she's at 232. We're just trying to put like fast pieces on her like this one. The more turns that she gets, the more sleeps, the more slows, the more stuns. And if you have a yellow violin, the more strips that you get out of the character. So that is why she is built this way. All right, now that you understand the team and why it is the way it is, let's jump into an actual game. All right, so here's the barrier at the start here. You're going to want to use your AOE, like, control skill here. Now, these are both slept, so I don't want to try to wake them up, so I'm not going to ask three. Instead, I'm going to fish for a defense break here on the Temple Guardian with the S1. Same thing here. I'm going to try to fish. And if I get the defense break, watch how little damage Lorena deals here. I hope you're ready. Let's fight together. I you can see I can take no damage with the basic skull, right? Now you'll notice S3 does actual damage here. Still not enough to break the barrier, though. I was just thinking I didn't We're going to try and stun one of these. Just get the bonus damage out. Something useful. All right, at this point, because I use Spiral Breakthrough, I can't deal any damage to the barrier, so all I can do is just stall. Should we get started? Don't want to wake that cannon up. My spear will protect everyone. Do one damage, Shall even I with a defense ready? break. Try to go for a blind here. I'll protect you. All right. So uh, he's not going to wake anybody up yet. We can actually deal some damage to him. So let's go for that. And pass a push up. Chunk him. Not a very squishy character, as you can see. Now, there, normally, even if I wasn't blind, I shouldn't hypnosis here. Because this ultimate cleanses all debuffs. But instead, we just fish for a dual attack. Alright, now all these ultimates are about to come in. Put up your defense buff. It'll only probably block one. It'll probably get stripped, but some is better than none. Go for defense break. Got it. Even with defense break, you'll notice zero damage. Try to sleep. Started. Nothing really to do here. You could try to strip, I guess, the crit buff here. I love playing with dolls. We could stun this one. I think you'll be my favorite. Sadly, got 15. We could break through to break his barrier. Ooh, just barely didn't get it. You. Try to strip this crit ball. Shall I make you pretty? Guess fish for a duel. Nothing really we could do here. The spirit of a commander. Alright, now we can start doing real damage. The window is open. They're all awake too, so let's just go for this. Get the AoE heal up, even if we get stripped, no big deal. 
Dude, it's a lot of damage coming out. Try to blind this one. Let's do this. Fish for duel. Barriers back. Could you give me something useful? Cheer. Sleep everybody. If I must fight. Alright, we could just hit here. I will continue my training. Again, you can see no damage. Shall I make you pretty? Let's stun the one that's not slowed. Got break. And then we have breakthrough here. So this lets you massive damage. I'll protect you. And we're about to get hit with a cannon, so I think I'm just gonna try to see if I can chunk this as fast as I can. Fish. What should I do next? And then this should push us to the next floor. And since we took so long, we get the built-in lifesteal here. Alright, so we're going to try to blind Pavel. We're going to go for a defense break here. Now, this will boost up, but I want to match his speed buff with my speed buff, and I need the healing. Alright, we want to stun the dog, so that, that way we don't take the dual attack. Let's try to... Let's try to strip this. Don't get it. Go for a soul burn death break. Gets resisted. Ooh, not a, not a good start. Alright, this is going to give him the move here. But again, I want to try to stun the wolf and keep him off buff. So we're going to S2 here. So that's going to give Pavel his ultimate here. But it's okay. Hopefully we can get enough, enough in here. Blind. Then Roz is going to take a ton of damage here. All right, let's do this. At this point, we can go S3 here, which I know seems counterintuitive because, again, buffing up, waking up the dog here. But if I go Soul Burn here and then S1 here, it's going to turn into Ruzid, so he was going to wake up here no matter what. So it's just strategically using our, our defense here. Our defense ball. Alright, so let's stun Ruzid here. Defense break. Got it. Go again. Alright, again, I want to match him. And honestly... To me, giving Ruzid buff here, his ultimate, isn't anywhere near as scary as him using his basic attack and hitting me with that massive AoE. Alright, they already have ult. I'm gonna go for the S2. If I get it, that's great. If not, no big deal. I'll protect you. Full burn here. I hope you're ready. Fish for duel. Could you give me something useful? The R push for passive and then breakthrough and that should be game or very close to it. Yep, got him. So there you go. There is a base 107 in a nutshell. Hopefully this was of some help to you. It's pretty straightforward. Just hopefully you have everything kind of go your way. This is like 
you know, the second or third time I've gone through this whole video on camera and things have kind of worked out nice and neat. It's not a super hard fight. It just becomes difficult. Like I said, if you use a lot of non-attack skills, if your defense breaks get resisted, if your strips and your stuns get resisted, those are kind of your fail cases. Otherwise, as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward fight. Go for defense buffs whenever possible. Make educated decisions on your AoE attacks like, hey, he's already going to have the ultimate anyway. Might as well get the defense if I can get it, right? Might as well get the speed and attack buff from Inos if I can get it, things like that. If you have any questions, as always, ask me down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 108. Later now.